Alrighty, Mr. Gatekeeper here. What I have here is a uh, custom staged 5 transistor amplifier from my hand boy, Mr. 911. He's been, uh, been waiting for this thing a good little while. I appreciate his patience. We decided to go with the uh, painted board on this one. To keep this thing looking good, not oxidizing in the future. And uh, you know, old gatekeeper, he's a guy that likes to give credit where credit is needed. And I have to give credit to Mr. Danny, one, two, three, because he's the first person I ever seen that painted his boards. You might be familiar, he used to do some comp builds where he would paint his boards. That's the first time I'd ever seen someone paint boards. After I'd uh, seen that many years ago, I seen uh, God rest his soul, uh, Miss, my buddy Chris of No Name Amplifiers, Mr. Stickman, he uh, painted a few boards too, I noticed in his time. And uh, you know, the good thing about painting boards is you'll never have to worry about years on down the line, of, you know, it oxidizing and looking nasty and this and that. And, it is a little bit more uh, labor for the builder, but uh, it, do it, it does give a nice uh, clean look to everything. And uh, Mr. 911 wanted to go with a all metal clad build. And basically all that means is, is that wherever there is a capacitor that has anything to do with the tuning of the, of the circuit. For example, these capacitors here, the capacitors on the output transformers, all the tuning capacitors, all the output tuning capacitors, you call them shunt capacitors, whatever. Pretty much all the capacitors that has anything to do with the tuning of the RF circuit is uh, metal clad capacitors that are focus. So there's the output tuning array for the output uh, of the four pill section and all that is is metal clad capacitors they can get a little bit hotter than a silver dip mica because they're still mica capacitors they're just encased with a metal encasement and they can get a little bit hotter and keep their value on the fly and they can also cool down quicker also so uh, I just had that idea a couple of years ago and just kind of started playing around with the idea and it's uh, became somewhat that uh, something a lot of people have, have, have been requesting. Well, anyway, um, he also wanted me to stage this because he does have a strong radio on hand so he can turn the one transistor section on and off or the four transistor section on and off. And he also wanted to go with the candy paint actually the candy paint was something that was added later so he's got the great jelly candy paint which is done at my buddy's uh, auto collision center house of color candy paint and uh, he does a great job so let's go ahead and show the output of this bad boy you got your SSB delay right here that's just in case he wants to go on on, on the SSB array of things there he wants to drop this old hammer out there on the sideband and of course that's going to do a delay on both you got to split it up like that and that's a big switch to do that with you don't have to have a big switch but there was a big hole right there so i just went ahead and rolled with that because you got to do a uh, delay for both relays so you got to do a little bit more labor when you do staging there is a little bit more labor involved since you got two different sections you want them all to work uh, properly when the other one's off or you want the fan to work uh, um, for example if you didn't add these diodes right here you see these little diodes right here if I turn one section on the other section would back feed through the fan wire and turn the other section on so there's a couple of things you got to do all right let's go ahead and let you see the uh, the one pill section first and I will tell you this is <laughs> I've never seen a one pill section do the amount of power that this one is doing and I had to back it down a little bit. That's what that 100 ohm resistor shunted the ground is doing. Because this bad boy was up doing around 200 watts PUP, which I couldn't believe it. But there's it, this, this particular Toshiba is just, is just working well in this circuit. So I had to back it down a little bit. 
but uh that that was pretty remarkable that was pretty remar remarkable so uh we're getting 250 watt slug here i'm getting used to this new camera y'all thanks to mr brb electronics my buddy ben all right 250 watt slug all right i think i got the pep zone so we're looking at the top scale you got a real low dead key so where you see the 10 on the top scale is 100 watts. Do so that's doing a little bit over about 115, close to 120. Do right there about 120. Um, like I said, it was doing about 200 watts before I added this resistor in right here. <laughs> That's about the best way of adding uh, for this particular circuit to add that in and not affect the input SWR as well. So just take a look at the RMS. This is it on RMS. Do oh, so we're getting a little bit of let's see. Do oh, get about 25, 30 watts. It was doing about 50 before I backed it down. Do oh, yeah. So that's about. 25 watts of course if you hit it a little bit more drive it, it can still achieve that 50 but uh trust me this is going to be more than adequate to keep this box running for a for a long time all righty so let's go ahead and and by the way we are on 14.6 volts all right let's go ahead and check out the four pill section I am going to change slugs for this. I'll be right back. Alrighty. We've got the 1,000 watt slug hooked up. This is just PEP on the old servo supply. After this, we'll hook it up to the bigger supply so we can see what, they'll, uh, what this box is doing with the one driving into the four. So in this section, if you got a stronger radio, you can just turn the one transistor section off. And also, there's something else I was wanting to show you that I forgot to show. If you notice, this thing's got a transmit LED, right? But if you look, I'm, I'm keying the four pill section right now, and the transmit LED is not coming on. Turn the two pill on, there's a transmit LED. Now, I did that for one reason. You can always keep in your mind, if you see that LED is coming on, that means that the two pill section is on. I mean, the one pill section is on, sorry. That kind of in a way help for you if you make a mistake and you're about to drive a bigger, bigger radio into this thing. And you key up real quick. As, as soon as you notice this light's on, that means that the driver section is active. Okay, so just keep that in mind. The uh, transmit LED is only going to light up if the driver section is active. Okay, the four pill section on, nothing lighting up. All right, so this is the four pill section. Just driving a small bench radio into it, which is only doing about four watts RMS, about 18 to 20 watts peak. Go. Getting close to about 600 watts right there, about 580 watts. Just hitting it with a small radio, it's pretty good. Go, oh, and I just remembered I forgot to show the input tune. I always do that, y'all. Here's the input tune of the four pill section. So now I can zoom without having to without having to lean forward. Do, oh, yeah. So that's a five watt slug. Do, oh, yeah. So that's about a quarter watt input reflect for the four pill section. All right, one pill section. Do yeah, do yeah. Pretty low reflect for the one pill section as well. All righty, and I guess I can go ahead and show feed through. This is with the box off. Got lucky, I didn't even have to correct this, which can become a little tricky if you're doing a stage damp. Uh, I'm going to have to adjust. Sorry about it, I'm still trying to get used to this camera, y'all. Uh, this is the feed through. 
Oh dear. Look at that. Oh dear. Because <laughs> it can get a little tricky if you need to make a correction when you're doing a staged amp. Because if you think about it, putting a capacitor, for example, on this feed through portion of the relay to ground is actually going to become the output, part of the output tune of the driver section. So that can get a little tricky if you need to do some uh, impedance correction on the on feed through of stage amplifiers. I had to do one for a 2x12 uh, not long ago and I, I had to incorporate that. It, it was a little tricky. I will admit it was a little tricky. Alright, so now it's time to hook up both sections. Uh, just if you want to see for the fun of it what it's doing RMS just hitting it with the radio four pill section I think ain't gonna be doing much oh yeah see so it ain't gonna be doing too much oh yeah about 80 bird or so all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the big power supply because the second you try to key up both of these together on the old servo supply here it cuts straight off so I'll be right back alrighty both levers on one going into the four all oh, Toshiba's and before I forget take a look at the corresponding purple power wire <laughs> you see it dot com and yes, it was some work to get this power wire because the company is a uh, new concept. So I went to them and they didn't have any purple left from their candy series. Ain't that a coincidence? I got a series called the candy series. So I was like, look, man, I want some of your candy power wire for my candy amplifier line. And they just didn't have any purple left. They were like, we didn't sell enough of it. You would have to buy this amount, this amount. To be able to get some purple wire and I was like oh man well how much will that be so yeah I had to dig in the old pocket and then I finally got me some four gauge wire but then I was like you know we need some eight gauge wire too so uh, luckily I didn't have to dig in the old pocket deep to get the eight gauge wire I think they pretty much understood hey this guy keeps pushing us to put purple wire let's go ahead and do another run you know so they, they uh, got some purple wire made, so I've got some purple 8-gauge and 4-gauge. I just went ahead and went with 4-gauge on this one. I hadn't got the 8-gauge in, in yet. All right, so this is the 1-pill section into the 4-pill section on the unregulated supply. This thing's about to rock and roll. I can feel it. 1,000-watt slug. We're just looking at the uh, PEP of things. Here you go, 911. We'll see what this beast is going to do. Go! Ha ha ha! Thank you, Jesus! That thing is rocking, son! Let's see what that bolts is dropping to. Go! 15.5, <clears throat> which is a little high. <clears throat> I'll hit it with that hot radio to drop. Over a kilowatt, man. Go! Off the scale, son! Let's take a look at the RMS. I told you it wasn't that bad of an idea to, uh, to back that one pill section down. Oh, holy snot! This thing is almost doing 400 bird with just out hitting it with a hot radio. Goodness. This would have been a 400 bird radio if I didn't bring it, knock that driver section down. But hey, I'm trying to make decisions for the longevity of the amplifier, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh. Look at that, about 360, 380. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Input tune. Oh, yeah. Pretty good and low. That's about even with the other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. All right, let's go ahead and hook up the hot radio, see what kind of uh, RMS increase we get, to get from it. And I am going to have to press stop because I got that coax hooked up to that superstar, so I got to do some adjusting. I'm happy, man. This thing has turned out fairly well. We'll be right back. Alrighty, got the uh, old Stickman radio hooked up. So now we're going to be driving it with about 8 watts RMS. I would uh, hit the old uh, D-rail into it, but my D-rail's uh, D-rail cover 29 is getting some work done to it. 
All right, so this is driving eight watts RMS to it. Let's see what we can get out of it. This is RMS. Go! Oh, look at that, 500, a little bit over 500. Go! Oh, yeah, heck yeah. Let's see what she's dropping to. Go! Oh, 14.7. See, if this was on a regulated power supply that could keep the current pushing and keep the voltage stable at about 15, 15 and a half volts, shoot man, you'd probably be 5, 50, 600 bird. But listen y'all, we don't have to run these amplifiers like that, even if they're Toshiba's. We're in the name of the game these days where it's all about the longevity. Run the amplifiers easy so they don't have to keep getting sent back to the technicians. Yeah, it makes the technicians more money, but it's best for an amplifier to work as long as it possibly can. Just cruising on this thing like that. Brook, brook, brook. <laughs> All right, big brother. I know you're going to be happy about this. Let me get the, get the top put on here, man. And uh, we'll show you the amp with the top on. And then we'll go ahead and sum this up and get on to the next project. This is a GK400. Low drive. We're gone. Bye-bye. Well, well, actually, I'll be back in just a second. All right, this is it with the top on. I know that uh, Mr. 911, that you're around an environment that does get a little dusty, so I went ahead and took Jip one of these fans right here. You just pop the grills, I mean. You just pop the top right here off. You just kind of get up under here and just pop it off. And there's just a little sponge pretty much in there. You can just go wash it off under the sink, uh, get all that dust out of there. And then uh, just dry it off with some paper towels real good, man, and put it back in there. And just make sure to check that uh, periodically. Maybe, you know, just for starting off, check it once a week, just starting off, just to see so you can kind of get a feel for when you'll need to, to, to uh, do that. Because that's going to keep the inside of this box looking uh, real good and clean. And yes, the fan does seem to be a little bit on the louder side, but man, you've got some awesome air going through this box. The air that's going through here, man, is amazing. I mean, this fan, if you, if you can withstand this, uh, this fan's loudness, it's going to keep this box good and cool. Good and cool, man. I mean, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Hopefully you can you can withstand it kind of just put it a little ways away from you or something but i just want to make sure to give you a good fan that's going to keep this box good and cool while you're out there talking so you don't ever have to send this bad boy back to me hey that's the goal <laughs> so that's what she looks like there's the back of her right there and i hope you enjoy man Another candy painted build done out there in the world of sound so people can have some fun. Old gatekeeper out here around the northeast end of Georgia. I'm good and gone. Bye-bye.